feels good. Talk college football on Tuesday night, baby. Let me tell you, uh, first intermission of the Boston College Providence game, so I'm going to do this now. And let me tell you, this past week, you know, we had a really, really intriguing game in which Tennessee and Georgia took on each other in the only ranked versus ranked matchup, you know. But at the same time, you know, we had some other stuff happen. Georgia, you know, yet again, you know, Carson Beck looked the greatest. But, you know, when things got a little tough, that's when that that dog's offense was putting in that work, you know. Tennessee just does not have the offense, and I've been saying this all year long. Ima Liaba, you know, has, has been, you know, kind of inconsistent. Dylan Sampson's like the only guy on offense that can really do anything. When Tennessee's defense was able to stymie Georgia, they were, but again, that offense just was not enough. It's just not enough for me. It's not enough for a lot of people. So now Tennessee is on the outside looking in for the moment. Now, the reason why I say for the moment is because we still have weeks of football left to play. Oregon was able to beat Wisconsin. It was a tough game, though, in which Oregon was down, you know, 13 6 at one point. Offense was barely on the field. But, you know, when the defense made the plays and Uli Lagale, you know, on defense was just uh, unreal, bro. He was just unreal. My God, you know, that Oregon defense, when it when it plays up to its full potential, is one of the best in college football. Oregon playing up to its full potential is just one of the best teams in college football in general. And they have not, just to be real, they have looked like the best team, and they are undefeated on all but Indiana, of course. You know, the other team that I consider the best at this current moment in time. But... Oregon has looked way more suspect than Indiana, and a lot of people are like, well, Indiana's strength of schedule is this and this. We'll talk about that because there's a game this week that matters. Oregon, you know, by virtue of beating Wisconsin, by virtue of still being unbeaten, is in the Big Ten title game. They will take on either Ohio State or Indiana, most likely. Penn State has the slimmest of chances of getting in, but it's going to either be Ohio State again or Indiana in the Big Ten title game. Thus, let's talk about it. Um, Curtis O'Rourke and that Indiana offense, I mean, my goodness, where can you start with, with the two miles or just Allison or, you know, just a defense that has been crazy good, you know, versus that Ohio State offense, Will Howard, Sean Judkins, you know, Travion Henderson, you know, Emeka Abuka, Carnell Tate, uh, Jeremiah Smith, it, it's it's a loaded, loaded offense it's on both sides of the ball. Indiana can score in bunches and bunches. Ohio State, while not being able to score in bunches and bunches, can wear you down. You know, going to be one hell of a game. This is the game that will more than likely determine who is going to the Big Ten Championship because, honestly, the week after this game, you know, you have Michigan for Ohio State and Purdue for Indiana, and those two teams do not scream, hey, we're going to beat you guys. They don't scream that to me. So I don't think, you know, next week those two teams will be any trouble. But whoever loses this game this week will not only miss the Big Ten Championship, but I think they will miss the college football playoff. Maybe. Now that second part is more so a maybe than anything because, honestly, right now with the way the rankings have looked, you know, there are some one-loss teams and undefeateds, you know, from the group of five. There's some one-loss team, you know, there's one-loss teams from the ACC and Big 12, you know, that are kind of just kind of just there, and they don't really move the needle, you know, so they're not going to do anything to those teams. So, honestly, whoever loses this game is probably safe to go into the playoff anyway, just to be completely real with you. But I'm just saying it for the sake of drama, just saying it for the sake of drama that whoever loses will kind of be out of things. Speaking of those teams that lost in the Big 12, BYU lost to Kansas late at night. Um, that offense was not clicking, I'll tell you that much right now. When Kansas was able to use Jalen Daniels, you know, and company, they were able to get down the field, you know, able to make BYU make mistakes. 
And that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy for the Jayhawks. Now they also have Colorado this week. Kansas does. And again, Kansas is fighting to do a bowl game at this point. And, you know, Colorado, yes, Travis Hunter, you know, ran for a touchdown this week. Yes, he got a pick this week. Yes, he did look like a guy that was, you know, potentially getting, you know, something for the Heisman. But, I mean, at this point in time, it's still GT's race. It's still GT's race until proven otherwise. Another three touchdown performance for him. Yeah, Boise State didn't look the greatest against San Jose State, but they won. You know, you know. Colorado beating Utah really doesn't scream anything to me at this point because Utah is just so injury prone and, and battered, bruised. It's like not even it's, – it's more of a pathetic victory at this point. It's like why, why are y'all even on the field at this point? So, yeah, Colorado is inching closer. But guess who's also inching closer to the Big 12 championship game? The Arizona State Sun Devils led by Cam Scadaboo. And they will be playing BYU this week in a jam-packed 230 slate you know, 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern. Slate, you know, again, that Colorado-Kansas game, Penn State trying to stay, un, you know, undeterred. You know, I would say unbeaten because they have a loss, but, you know, they're trying to stay undeterred. You know, Penn State loses another game. They are definitely out. Texas trying to stay, stay ahead of the game against Kentucky. Kentucky is no slouch. Minnesota also no slouch. Do not sleep on the Golden Gophers, the P.J. Flex. Crew. So Texas, Penn State, please just don't lose. Same thing with Alabama. I know Oklahoma's terrible, but that defense still, you know, can give you a little bit of nightmare, you know, at times. You know, it's it's that that Oklahoma defense is honestly, they've kind of gotten worse as the season goes along. You know, they were really good at the beginning of the season, but once Red River hit, the, the breaks were off and Venable's train has just gone off deep end. So I don't know how that game's going to go because Alabama took care of business against Mercer this week, obviously. And, you know, Alabama trying to continue to win. And I'm also trying to continue to win. Again, they are the only other team with one loss in the SEC play. And if Anna loses against Auburn, oh boy, that's going to be rough, buddy. That's going to be real rough, you know, for a team that's outside looking in at a playoff spot right now, you know, the big 12 still isn't decided because don't worry. We still have Iowa state lurking. So don't worry about Arizona state and Colorado just yet. BYU. Iowa state is also lurking. Ole Miss plays Florida. DJ Lagway. Oh boy. that Florida just knocked LSU out the rankings completely. So Ole Miss better not lose this game against Florida. You know what I'm saying? They better not. For Boise State, all they have to do is beat Wyoming this week. I believe they are basically locked into the Mountain West Championship as they only have one game left. But, again, Colorado State, you know, is unbeaten in Mountain West play. UNLV has the one loss to Boise. And, you know, Hodge Malik Williams and company can, you know, continue to win. They continue to win. Then things should go well. But they got to hope for Colorado State to lose, too. So we're still kind of wondering, you know, what's that going to entail? But, yeah, the other big game this week, again, Tulane and Army have clinched spots in the AAC championship game. You know, Tulane was able to beat the brakes off of Navy, who got just absolutely destroyed a couple weeks ago at Notre Dame, and Navy's been kind of off the rails ever since. Army, on the other hand, with – quarterback that has been, you know, just on a tear in Bryce Daly, you know, a lot of people are not really talking about him, you know, there are a lot of guys that are kind of, you know, more of a Heisman favorite to me this year, you know, like Tyler Warren at Penn State who's been all on unreal, Bryce Daly at Army who's been unreal with over 20 rushing touchdowns, and, you know, the Army team, you know, runs a similar, but, you know, more back to basics flex bone type hybrid offense, you know, with a little bit of gun in there, you know, similar to what Navy, you know, was trying to implement, you know, because again, remember last year or last year in Ireland, Notre Dame, you know, just kind of beat the brakes off of Navy and Navy was trying so many different things. We're trying to put some wishbone in there, some wing T, some, some everything, some split back veer. They were trying everything and it still didn't work, you know, last year. And it didn't work this year either with the, with the addition of the shotgun. Didn't work this year either for the Navy, 
midshipmen. But the Army Black Knights are different. Their defense is a little bit different, you know, than Navy's, and their defense has been more of a ball hawking, you know, crazy type team in which, you know, they stymie one of the best passing offenses in the country in my North Texas mean green, you know. Notre Dame does not pass the ball like that. Riley Leonard, you know, he throws like 200 yards a game, but he will run the ball on you. You know, Jeremiah Love in the backfield as well. You know, ain't ain't no slouches here, baby. This is a Notre Dame team that cannot afford to lose because, again, Notre Dame is basically locked into either the 5, 6, 7, or 8 seed, you know, as far as hosting. You know, that's the highest seed they can get is number 5, you know. And if they were to trip up, if they were to trip up too, I, I think that opens the door for somebody. That opens the door for one of these other, you know, Big 12 or ACC or even some of these SEC teams you know, that are on the outside looking in right now. So at the end of the day, be sure to watch Army Notre Dame, you know, in prime time. It's probably the best game in that primetime window. Again, Alabama, Oklahoma does not move the needle for me. It does not. Um, the ACC still, again, that's still being decided. Miami and SMU are both playing conference games this week. Clemson has finished their conference play. You know, they beat S they beat Pitt, you know, and SMU and Miami both have games this week. Again, it's Clemson just trying to wait to see if SMU or Miami slips up. If Miami slips up, then that means Clemson could be in the ACC championship game. SMU has to slip up twice in order for Clemson to get in. So, you know, there there is a path for Clemson to get there, but it's at, at this point in time, you know, as stuff's glitching out for a second, but at this point in time, just wait a second, Clemson. Just wait a second. Play, play, play the Citadel, and get ready for the Palmetto Bowl. Okay, that's all you guys need to do. So again, Clemson is actually still in position to make the playoff too. So I don't know why people are saying, "Hey, Clemson's out of this thing with the two losses." Not necessarily. Again, you have to be inside the top twelve, really, and things can change in a heartbeat. Again, we have two weeks left in the regular season this week. And next week, rivalry week, and then conference championship week. There are three weeks of football remaining before the selection show on Sunday, December the 8th. And it's going to be beautiful. All of it is going to be beautiful. So in that case, let me tell you, I'm going to get on about it here, and I'm going to talk to you all later. And, you know, we got some more content dropping for you tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So. Be sure to come back so I can, you know, mourn my Dallas Cowboys a little bit more tomorrow. And I'll see you very, very soon, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. You know, I'm going to be watching Purdue Marquette in college basketball very soon in about an hour. That game's about to tip off at an hour. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be some good college basketball and all sorts of lovely goodies. So take care. Good night. Again, talk to you all later.